Um, so this one's a bond dissociation energy question. It says calculate the enthalpy change, uh, delta H, for the reaction using uh, the bond dissociation energy data. Um, and then there's the reaction, and there's the bond dissociation energy data that's given uh, in kilojoules per mole. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, do this reaction or do this problem together. So if you don't mind, we're recording the video right now. So um, whenever you uh, do these types of problems, you got to remember that the bond dissociation energy, to calculate the enthalpy, you just take the reactants, uh, the total energy of the reactants, subtract them from the total energy of the products, okay? This is for bond dissociation energy, okay? Um, so here, let's, in fact, before we do it that way, uh, since we all know Vesper theory, right, it's it might be uh, good to write out the Lewis structures of these so you can see which bonds are actually forming and breaking. Okay, that would be the best way to do this. So I'm not going to pressure you into giving me all the Lewis structures, but if you're having any questions with any of these, it'd be good to go back or maybe even ask during the, this video. For this problem, you don't necessarily need to put the lone pairs, but it's always good to remind yourself. Okay. So if we look here, hopefully we can see we've got this bond here that's breaking this one forming here, right? The other two bonds, nothing happened to them. So we don't have to put them in our formula. If we did, it'd be okay, but we'd have to resubtract them out, okay? So um, also we see the chlorine-chlorine bond broke, right? And an HCl, or an HCl bond was formed, right? So those are the bonds that we need to focus on. Does anybody see any other bonds that were broken or formed in this reaction? I don't, okay? So those are the ones we need to focus on. And luckily we have all of those energies given to us here. So the delta H of the reaction is like what we said, the bond dissociation of the reactants, the energy, minus the dissociation energy of the product. So the sum of that, I guess. Okay, so when we sum that all up, all right, what do we have? A NH bond, so the D of NH plus the D of the CLCL bond, that's it, right? And subtract that from the D of the NCL plus the D of the HCL. Is everybody okay with what I've done? Mm -hmm. Okay, don't, don't overthink these problems. It's real easy to overthink them, okay? It's much easier, these problems, when you know the Lewis structures of everything, because then you can just say, okay, this bond is formed, this bond's broken, or whatever. But even if you didn't, you could add up all three of these bonds. You could put three times NH, and then over here you'd put two times NH, you know, and then just subtract them back out. But we're focusing on the ones that have been actually made and broken. And so now we just, it's a plug and chug, right? So D of NH. Is everybody okay with what I've done? Yes. 
Okay. And then MCL, 201 kilojoules per mole. And then add that to HCL, 431 kilojoules per mole. And then just get out your calculator. 389 plus 243. I've got 632 kilojoules per mole. And we're going to subtract that, this other number from it. So 201 plus 431. And this one's turning out to be, I guess, interesting. Maybe not so interesting. So we get the same number for both of these. So the delta H of this reaction is going to be what? Zero. So not too interesting, I guess. <laughs> Oftentimes, delta H uh, is going to give you uh, some number, negative or positive, right? And if it's going to be a negative number, it's an exothermic reaction. If it's a positive number, it's an endothermic reaction. Right, the exothermic are usually favorable. Um, so, uh, yeah, in this particular instance, it just so happened that uh, the bonds added up to the same thing and subtracted out, and we got zero. So there are there any questions about this one? Any questions? Okay, cool.